What first inspired you to direct this uh, book to screen? Uh, well, um, I had been sent uh, Emma's first draft of the screenplay and, um, and I read the book the same day and I was just so taken with the characters um, uh, and the way that they express, uh, that Emma expressed, you know, the sort of visceral quality of having a body and, and having many competing desires and, and the sort of humour of it and the pathos of it. I mean, it just felt like this very strong, rich world that I felt was very familiar but also not seen very much on screen. And so um, I really leapt at it and kind of pursued Emma and Sarah. I mean, they sent it to me and we did some Skypes and I sent over some materials. And um, yeah, I just felt it was it was a timely story that I, I wanted to see, yeah. I'd love Sophie's film as well, 52 Tuesdays. I just thought it was so beautiful. And then some of her comedy shorts as well, the elephant one, that's so good. <laughs> so um, so it just it just felt so right for like the most perfect fit for the story and, and, and the fact that just that strong response that and that we felt from the beginning, you know, that connection, I think, from, mm. you know, from similar interests in terms of looking at women's bodies very closely and the way that women felt judged for, for doing certain things with their bodies and not doing, you know, other things with their bodies. These are all things that we really want to explore <clears throat> Um, in, in a, as Sophie says, a very visceral way um, without holding back and just kind of and try and make something really bold but, but beautiful, ho hopefully at the same time. Which it really was. <laughs> um, also, what was the decision behind setting it in Dublin instead of Manchester, like in the book? Mm. I mean, yeah, the book, you know, the, the film is, uh, the book is set in Manchester and Manchester is a very strong kind of character in the book and, and Emma's, you know, from there. So it had a, a real quality and we always imagined that we would set it there. Um, the first impulse to shift it was financial. Um, and I remember being approached and asked, you know, what about we go over to Dublin and have a look if we could shoot it there? And the, there was certainly a question of, can we shoot it to be Manchester still, but set, um, sh shot in Dublin? And then we really realised that Dublin is this beautiful literary city. You know, there's like poetry on every corner, you know, written on the walls and, and, and people drink a lot. It's, you know, it, it, and it felt very um, much in the sort of world of the mm -hmm. girls. And it also was very beautiful. And, it, and I, we realised that it was important to have a city that had character and create a character and that was part of the story. And so taking from the book, it was like the specificity of place is important rather than the actual place, I mm -hmm. thought. And for me, it, you know, it sort of elevated something in the film, those kind of crazy old dilapidated buildings and this kind of Irish quality in it, mm -hmm. which I think, you know, you would say Completely. already existed. Weirdly, afterwards, after so we'd made the move to Dublin and I was redrafting the script with that in mind, I noticed all the, all the sort of Irishness and that was already in the book and already in the story and like there's a lot of Yeats poetry, which I know for anyone from Ireland is probably a bit of a cliche, but but I really love Yeats, and and so there were lots there was lots of, of Yeats poetry in there that um, had made it also into the script, and and then like Laura's called Laura Joyce, which was always a bit of a joke, named after a great writer because she's not one, um, and so, and her dad was always Irish as well in the book, Bill in the in the in the novel is, is Irish. And so I was like, it's all kind of, it was there. It felt almost sort of fateful in the end. And as Sophie says, it was it was a big change and we all had to get our heads around it. But, you know, everyone did and Holiday got her accent around it as well and did the most amazing Dublin yeah. accent. I didn't even, even realise she was British. Yeah. <laughs> no. So like, and, and on set we had like, it was, it was a co-pro between um, Australia and um, Ireland. And all the Dubliners on set all said her accent was water, watertight, didn't they? They were like, Holiday's accent is bang. Which is really hard because yeah. she had a director and a DP who were Australian. There was like costume designer was Australian. There were <laughs> other Brits on set. So to like she wasn't immersed in a Dublin accent. She had to kind of maintain it with the help of a few key people on set. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, also, your film has been compared to the likes of Trainwreck, Fleabag and Bridesmaids. Were they any inspiration? Mm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's lots of things I think that we were inspired by, not only those kind of women's films, as I would call them, but, you know, With Nail and I, obviously, which yeah. um, is a huge influence. Um, certainly things like, you know, Fleabag has got a, you know, sensibility that I, I respond to and things like Broad City and stuff like that. Although Fleabag probably wasn't around when we were developing. No, it wasn't. Um, yeah, it was before that. Although, we, yeah, straight, another strange coincidence is there's a fox in Fleabag and there's, we use a fox quite a lot in, yeah. in animals as well. So it's kind of like something nice about the fact that that symbol, you know, it symbolises the, for women especially, that, that exchange between the civilised part of you and the wild part of you. And I think that really applied, that really connects 
um, that theme really connects Fleabag and, and animals, mm-hmm. I think. Just that kind of a woman trying to, to you know, live within a, a body and, and be behave in the way that society is expecting her to. And to find some sense of freedom. You know, mm-hmm. that was our sort of idea of the fox as a, a sort of... Um, not a wild animal, a, a kind of city animal, mm-hmm. but but has a sense of freedom. Um, but things like train wreck, I mean, they're really interesting things for us to talk about because it, we're looking for that freedom in a story. In in train wreck, there's a certain moralizing that goes on. It's a very funny, very excellent movie. But there's a moment where you know uh, she has to grow up, throw out her booze, and do a cheerleading routine to get a guy. And we were very conscious to to not have that path in this particular movie. Like, mm-hmm. um, I, I really enjoyed Emma's book and the end of it and how um, singular that felt and how that decision that she's been um, faced with for the whole thing is, is actually the wrong decision and that she needs to choose something else. And that became a very important thing to hold on to, I think. Yeah. Right. Thank you. For Thank, your you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>